the nightly business report good evening tonight the central bank says sri lanka's banks are becoming more sound as interest rates fall and economic conditions improve but non performing loans in domestic banks are still rising the institute for policy studies said household healthcare costs in sri lanka have risen 48% within a year and access to primary healthcare has declined from 95% in 2023 The final trading day of the week saw a very optimistic close over at the Colombo Bourses with both the ASPI and S&P SL20 ending logging gains. And in the US, the Wall Street's main indexes closed slightly lower after higher than expected inflation and jobless claims data. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us. A central bank report said Sri Lanka's banks are becoming more sound as interest rates fall and economic conditions improve, but non-performing loans in domestic banks which are not systematically important are still rising. Interest rates are easing with deposit rates falling ahead of lending and economic environment was improving. The central bank said in a financial stability review that resilience of financial institutions gradually improved during the first half of this year. amidst easing macroeconomic conditions as reflected by key financial soundness indicators of the banking sector such as credit quality liquidity and capital adequacy however the non performing loans ratio remained elevated highlighting continued challenges while the provision coverage ratio improved the non performing loan ratio of banks had fallen to 12.8% by the end of the second quarter of this year from 13.5% year earlier as credit expansion started npls had also contracted 2.2% NPL ratios of foreign banks and domestic systematically important banks fell while bad loans of the other local banks rose to 13.4% by the second quarter of this year from 12.9% a year earlier last year DSIB had reported the highest default risk World Bank Group Country Manager of Sri Lanka and Maldives Gavog Sargsyan addressing the launch of the World Bank's biannual report in Colombo said that Sri Lanka has at least about 10 billion dollars in untapped export potential. The country manager emphasized that several things needed to be done to untap this potential. Bringing more investments is one step. For investments removing red tapes and making more level playing field for domestic and foreign investments is critical. Sustaining reforms will be an absolutely critical part of the country moving forward and realizing this potential. Saksan expressed optimism that the new leadership of the country and all stakeholders will come together and make sure that the policy momentum is maintained which will help the country start moving in the right direction it deserves to be. He also said that Sri Lanka has recovered faster than expected after a painful economic crisis. However, the country has a poverty rate of around 25%. World Bank senior country economist for Sri Lanka and Maldives Richard Walker stressed that it is necessary to prepare the domestic industries and business ready for more competition which is another hurdle to untap the 10 billion dollars of exports companies and firms that are not as competitive may struggle against foreign competition those need to be transitioned and support provided in that respect Walker stated the reforms are to avoid another crisis but of course these policy consistencies are the first goal Fiscal adjustment and monetary policy, financial sector policy is a lot of what's happened to be a put in place that has contributed to the stabilization adding it is important to continue with those policies. The Institute for Policy Studies said household healthcare costs in Sri Lanka have risen 48% within a year from 2020 to 2021 and access to primary healthcare has declined from 95% in 2019 to 82% in 2022 and 2023. IPS economist Sunimali Maduravala said that though the country once prided itself on achieving remarkable health outcomes and minimal spending, recent crises have exposed significant weakness in the system. She said Sri Lanka allocates only 8 to 9% of its total public spending to healthcare, far below the global average, noting that household healthcare costs have skyrocketed, rising to 48% within just one year from 2020 to 2021. Access to primary healthcare has also declined from 95% in 2019 to 82% in 2022-23 at the national level, with rural areas hit the hardest, she said. She also added that the rising healthcare costs are straining both wealthy and the poor households. with the poorest bear in the brunt to combat these challenges the ips has recommended expanding social health insurance reducing out of pocket healthcare cost and promoting public private partnerships lessons from countries like thailand and indonesia which have implemented long term health reforms could provide a road map for the country
The Sri Lanka Canada Business Council delegates held a pivotal briefing session with Prime Minister Dr. Harini Amrasuria ahead of their official mission to Canada. The strategic meeting, which took place in Colombo, was centered around the Council's upcoming efforts to foster stronger economic, trade, and investment relations between Sri Lanka and Canada. The SLCBC delegation provided a comprehensive overview of their objectives, focusing on promoting sustainable growth, identifying new trade opportunities, and encouraging foreign direct investment. They also shared insights into planned meetings with Canadian business leaders, government officials, and key stakeholders during their visit. The Premier also emphasized that agriculture, IT, education, tourism, and financial services are among the key focus sectors to be promoted aggressively to achieve sustainable development. Further, she noted the importance of tackling challenges towards the climate change. The Sri Lanka-Canada Business Council's mission to Canada is set to take place on the 14th of October to the 22nd of October with a delegation actively pursuing avenues that will yield long-term benefits for both the nations. Let's take a short commercial break. Market updates on the other side. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. The final trading day of the week saw a very optimistic close over at the Colombo Bourses. Both the ASPI and S&P SO20 ended logging gains, putting an end to the week with mostly positive sentiments. The ASPI also continued to maintain points above the 12,000 mark. For more on today's trading sessions, we have with us Manusha Kandanara, Chief from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. After a few sessions of profit taking, Colombo stock market experienced sustained buying interest throughout the trading day due to improved participation from both retail and high net worth investors. The ASPI started day on a bullish note due to the positive sentiment of the investors. Selected banking sector and diversified financial sector counters along with blue chip stocks took the center stage while renewed interest on plantation sector stocks was observed mainly in Kahawatta plantations, Hapugasthana plantations, Odupusrella plantations and Agra Pratala plantations. As a result, SPI closed the trading session in green at 12,294 gaining 130 points. The S&P SL20 index also rose by 34 points, closing at 3,640 for the day. Meanwhile, the turnover saw a 45% increase from yesterday and stood at LKR 2.3 billion, marking a 13% increase from the monthly average. 24% of the overall turnover was contributed by the banking sector, whilst 39% of the overall turnover was jointly contributed by the capital goods and food, beverage and tobacco sectors. Notably, foreign investors remain net buyers for the third consecutive session with a net foreign inflow of LKR 107.2 million on the back of strong foreign buying interest on JKH with a foreign inflow of LKR 63.5 million. The top gainers for the day were Blue Diamonds Voting, Hapugasthana Plantations, Udupuslala Plantations, EML Consultants and Muscalia Plantations. Meanwhile, the top losers for the day were Blue Diamonds Non-Voting, Nation Lanka Finance, Serendim Hotels Non-Voting, Renuka Foods Voting and Diesel and Motor Engineering PLC. And with the week wrapping up, what was the aggregate performance of the markets for the past few days? Well, for an analysis of this, we have with us Vinodini Rajapupati from First Capital Holdings. Thank you. This week, the Colombo Stock Exchange saw significant volatility, starting with a strong rally driven by bargain hunters, pushing the ASPI to a three-month peak of 12,165. Investor sentiment was boosted by the nearing completion of the external debt restructuring with the banking sector at the forefront led by key players like Sampath, HNB and Commercial Bank. John Keel's holdings also saw notable activity supported by solid foreign participation as investor confidence grew surrounding the debt restructuring process. By midweek, after three consecutive days of gains, Profit-taking took over 
especially in the banking and blue chip stocks including Sampath, DFCC, Haley's and Aitken Spence. High net worth and retail participation slowed amidst selling pressure. However, towards the end of the week, buying interest resurfaced in select banking and blue chip stocks driven by renewed participation from retail and high net worth investors. Additionally, plantation stocks saw revived interest as the week concluded. The ASP closed the week at 12,294, registering a 2% increase compared to the previous week's close of 12,053. Moreover, the average daily market turnover declined by 19% over the week to approximately 2 billion rupees. Key sectors which contributed to the turnover included capital goods, banking, diversified financials, and food beverage and tobacco. Furthermore, foreign investors maintained a net buying position throughout the week, resulting in a net inflow of 607 million rupees. This was primarily driven by strong foreign interest for stocks in John Keel's holdings and commercial bank. Gold prices saw an upward movement today, buoyed by recent economic data that reinforced expectations for a Federal Reserve rate cut next month. Market participants are also keenly awaiting the U.S. Producer Price Index report, which is anticipated to provide further direction for the market. Spot gold increased by 0.6%, reaching $2,644.16 per ounce, although it remains down approximately 0.3% for the week. This follows a significant peak last month when prices hit a record high of $2,685.42. Meanwhile, U.S. gold futures also experienced gains rising by 0.8% to $2,661.40 per ounce. The interplay of these factors highlights the ongoing volatility and potential opportunities in the gold market. In early Asian trading today, oil prices experienced a modest decline influenced by stronger-than-anticipated inflation data from the U.S., which has raised questions regarding the extent to which interest rates may decrease in the coming months. Specifically, Brent crude futures for December delivery dipped by 0.5%, settling at $78.98 per barrel, while West Texas Intermediate crude futures saw a reduction of 0.4%, reaching $74.70. 79 cents per barrel. Despite this slight downturn, both Brent and WTI prices are positioned for a second consecutive week of gains. This resilience can be attributed to ongoing concerns over potential supply disruptions in the Middle East, which continue to exert a risk premium on the market. Additionally, market participants are closely monitoring the effects of Hurricane Milton as it impacts U.S. oil production, particularly as the storm moves through Florida, potentially disrupting operations in the region. The Sri Lankan rupee has slight appreciation against the US dollar in commercial banks today compared to yesterday. At commercial bank, the buying rate for the US dollar remains unchanged while the selling rate has decreased. And now let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee is performing against other global currencies. Let's take a short commercial break now. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Cinnamon Air, Sri Lanka's premier domestic airline, is proud to announce the launch of two new daily scheduled flights connecting Kandy and Sigiriya with the south coast destinations Koggala and Hambantota. These flights are set to commence on the 1st of November 2024 and will operate until the 30th of April 2025, strategically timed to cater to the influx of foreign travellers during the winter holiday season. 
These cross-country flights are designed to enhance convenience and reduce travel time while ensuring an unparalleled experience for those who wish to explore Sri Lanka's south coast after visiting the cultural triangle on the central hill country. These flight routes are meticulously crafted to meet the increase in demand for efficient and luxurious travel within Sri Lanka. With these flights, passengers can easily journey from any part of the cultural triangle or the central hill country to the serene south coast in 40 to 50 minutes compared to the 6 to 7 hours on the road, providing travellers with more time to indulge in the island's idyllic golden sandy beaches and exciting natural wonders. These seamless cross-country connections enable to quick air travel to Hambantota, the Gateway Royal National Park and the Kogala and idyllic base of exploring the coastal cities of Gol, Valigama, Mirissa, Dikwalla and Tangol. In addition to the significance of the destinations, these flights themselves are a highlight. The routes are serviced by Cinema Nea fleets of Kessna 208 aircraft and the route originated from Kandy to South Coast is served by the amphibian variation, offering a unique travel experience involving taking off on water. These aircraft are specifically chosen to enhance the passenger experience, featuring large windows that provide unobstructed views of Sri Lanka's diverse and stunning landscapes, including panoramic vistas of lush forests, rolling hills and pristine coastlines. Unilever Sri Lanka, in partnership with Vega Innovations and the United States Agency for International Development, is scaling up the use of refillable stations. These stations, part of Vega Innovations' U-Fill initiative, offers consumers cost-effective ways to refill Unilever products such as laundry liquids and shampoos while reducing reliance on single-use plastic packaging. By 2027, the U-Fill initiative is expected to prevent over 128 metric tons of plastic waste from entering Sri Lankan landfills. Consumers will also benefit from 20-30% to 30 lower cost by refilling instead of purchasing new packaging. USET's Ocean Plastic Reduction Activity will support these efforts through strategic and technical assistance. The Memorandum of Understanding formalized in the partnership was signed at Vega Innovations Headquarters, a significant milestone in efforts to reduce plastic waste across Sri Lanka. This built on Unilever's and Vega Innovations' existing network of refill stations in locations such as Colombo Fort Railway Station, Seva Vanita Budget Centre and apartment complexes with plans to scale up across the country. This localised initiative also aligns with Unilever's broader efforts through the Circle Alliance catalyzing inclusive, resilience and circular local economies, a global public-private collaboration launched earlier this year by Unilever, USAID and EY to address plastic waste and drive the development of circular economies. The alliance is initially focused on India, Indonesia, Vietnam and the Philippines. <laughs> Ceylon Agro Industries' Prima Group Sri Lanka partnered with the Sri Lanka Institute of Marketing for the fifth consecutive year as a strategic product partner for the Diploma in Strategic Brand Management. Prima brands are firm favourites in Sri Lanka's households and key international markets. Through this partnership, the company aims to nurture a new generation of marketing professionals who can contribute significantly to the development and growth of Sri Lanka's marketing industry. SLIM's Diploma in Strategic Brand Management is a comprehensive program that combines classroom sessions, case studies, presentations and field assignments. It provides students with a well-rounded understanding of brand management principles and their practical applications. Mr. Sajid Gunaratna, the General Manager of Ceylon Agro-Industries Prima Group Sri Lanka, stated that they are delighted to continue their partnership with SLIM in this program that equips students with necessary skills to excel in the dynamic world of marketing. Ceylon Agri Industries, Prima Group Sri Lanka is dedicated to nurturing and empowering youngsters to reach their full potential. By investing in the future of youth, Prima not only demonstrates its commitment to corporate social responsibility, but also recognizes the boundless potential of younger generation in the country. The Bentara Celestia Ayurveda Resort, the latest addition to Sri Lanka's tourism industry, boasts an investment of 28 billion rupees and spans over six acres of land, housing 65 luxurious rooms, five of which are villas. The Board of Investment of Sri Lanka is facilitating this new enterprise in the tourism sector and will continue with future expansion as well. The world's ongoing health-related issues will continue to fuel the growing trend of holistic healing and wellness. People's interest in health, travel and food is on the rise. Further disposable incomes rise and disposable income is a factor in the growth of wellness tourism. Hectic lifestyle and the modern pace of the life can lead to stress and burnout, which in turn can drive people to seek wellness tourism, which is further influenced by chronic diseases. The number of people with chronic diseases is increasing, which can drive people to seek wellness tourism. The future looks very bright, according to the Global Wellness Institute 4 
forecast, the market will soar to $1.3 trillion by next year, the fastest growth rate of any wellness market through 2025. The Bentura Celeste Ayurveda Resort has the vision to continue the rich tradition of Sri Lankan culture and offers more than just standard Ayurvedic treatments. It also offers contemporary programs like yoga classes, meditation, with close to nature beach meditation and healing mind and body. Further, the resort will provide the healing system with a tailor-made menu under the guidance of nutritionists and indigenous doctors, which is synonymous with the anti-aging detoxing with palatable foods. In a major milestone for Sri Lanka's renewable energy sector, Maxon Solar and HNB Assurance signed a landmark memorandum of understanding, marking the launch of a revolutionary solar energy solution package that includes comprehensive insurance benefits. The collaboration between Maxon Solar, HNB, HNB Assurance and HNB General Insurance bring to market a first-of-its-kind solar solution that not only provides best products after installation support, energy savings but also includes a range of insurance coverages. Customers investing in Maxon Solar Systems will receive solar insurance, life benefits, medical benefits, disability benefits and the maturity benefits offering them peace of mind and financial protection alongside a clean energy solution. In addition to providing clean energy, HNB will offer tailored loan facilities to to make solar energy more affordable for Sri Lankan households and businesses. This partnership makes it easier for customers to adopt sustainable energy practices with added security of knowing their investment is protected by insurance policies. With over 11 years of experience, Maxon Solar continues to be at the forefront of Sri Lanka's solar energy sector, consistently delivering high-quality installations and exceptional customer service. The company's new offerings, coupled with HNB's financial insurance support, further cement its position as one of the top solar companies in the country. Going in for a short commercial break now, we'll be right back with global updates. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Most Asian stocks drifted lower today with Chinese markets sinking in anticipation of more cues on fiscal stimulus while South Korean shares rose after the Bank of Korea cut interest rates. Broader markets were subdued as hotter than expected U.S. inflation data spurred doubts over just how much the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates in the coming months. Asian markets took a negative lead in from Wall Street which ended slightly lower yesterday as the inflation data further bets that the Fed will cut rates by a smaller margin in November. Stock index futures drifted higher in Asian trade with focus squarely on the third quarter earning season. Over in the U.S., the Wall Street's main indexes closed slightly lower after higher than expected inflation and jobless claims data. Wall Street's main indexes closed slightly lower on Thursday after higher than expected inflation and jobless claims data. The Dow dipped more than a tenth of a percent, the S&P 500 slipped two tenths, and the Nasdaq ticked down marginally. The number of Americans filing new unemployment claims last week rose more than expected. And a closely watched consumer price index reflected a marginally higher inflation rate in September than economists had forecast. But J.D. Hatfield, CEO of Infrastructure Capital Advisors and CIO of ICAP ETF, said the CPI report was actually fairly strong when you looked under the hood. Stocks on the move included Delta Airlines, which fell 1 percent after forecasting quarterly revenue below expectations in anticipation of slower travel spending. Shares of American Airlines also lost ground. Pfizer shares fell almost 3 percent, as former executives distance themselves from activist investor Starboard's campaign against the drug maker. Investors now turn their focus to third quarter earnings, with major banks scheduled to report results on Friday. Japan's fast retailing owner of clothing brand Uniqlo booked its third consecutive year of record earnings, boosted by widened profit margins in its international segments. It's been another blockbuster 12 months for Uniqlo. On Thursday, parent firm Fast Retailing posted a third straight year of record earnings. Operating profit jumped 31% to over $3.3 billion. That was ahead of both company and analyst forecasts. And Fast Retailing says it expects profits to climb yet further next year. 
Known for its affordable basics, Uniqlo has been boosted by a weak yen. That increases the value of its overseas earnings and encourages tourists to splurge while they're in Japan. China looks less positive, however. With more than 900 stores there, the country is Uniqlo's biggest overseas market. It has become a bellwether for retail in the world's second biggest economy. But China's sluggish recovery has sapped consumer confidence, weighing on sales. Founder Tadashi Yanai, Japan's richest man, has long aimed to make Uniqlo the world's biggest fashion retailer. European rivals H&M and Zara stand in the way of his goal. But Yanai says a consumer shift from luxury to value will help his firm grow more in the years ahead. And that's all from us here at the Nightly Business Report. Join us again on Monday for more key updates across the business globe. Until then, I'm Anradi Vikramasinghe. Thank you very much for watching and good night.